After a few rough outings, Cubs are looking to bounce back tonight as they kick off a four-game series against the Braves. We'll have the series opener for you at the top of the hour right here on CSN. Building a bridge to first pitch. Welcome to Sports at Central, presented by Comcast Business. I am Pat Boyle. We'll take you live to Wrigley for the latest as Jake Arrieta gets the ball. Uh, Jake Arrieta gets the start tonight. Did the Bears do any better against the Colts on the second day of their workouts in Indy? And after struggling all season long, Tiger Woods looked like well, the Tiger Bolt, at least for one round. Sportsnet Central. Let's go. Sportsnet Central, presented by Comcast Business. Wind blowing straight out over Cast, and could be another offensive night. These two left-handed starters hope it's not. No. Rivet in the air out of the deep right. Soler will watch it go. That's a home run for Castellanos. He's going to be fine. I have no, I have no concerns whatsoever. Drives this ball into deep center. Fowler will not have a play on it. It's gone. Are you kidding me? Yeah, um, pretty much sums it up. He drives this ball to deep left, and that is going to be a grand slam to make it seven to nothing. They were in the third inning. We got beat up by a pretty good hitting team for two days. Well, rough one for Lester and company. Loses a three straight. The Cubs still own a three-game lead for that second wild card spot in the NL. Who better than Jake Arrieta to right the ship? Luke Stuckmeyer has your press pass from the corner of Clark and Addison. Tigers had their way with Cubs starters the last two games. Nice to see Jake on the bump to kick off this series, Luke. Yeah, great to see the Tigers out of town, Pat. It's uh, been a rough couple days around here. 41 runs scored between the Cubs and Tigers the last two days. Wind has been a major factor. The Cubs scored eight runs in both games and still lost. Tonight, the wind is blowing out hard again. Right, right center field. We'll see what happens. Uh, Jake Arriet on the mound. Miguel Montero behind the plate. Montero in his first season with the Cubs, and he said he's still learning about this quirky ballpark. It's just kind of hard to adjust to it, you know. Uh, early in the year, you, you, as a catcher, you call games a little bit more comfortable knowing if they hit the ball good, it's a good chance the ball's going to be caught. And now, you know, you, you call a game kind of avoiding, avoiding the opposite team to, to hit the ball pretty much, you know, because, you know, if they hit the ball, the ball's going to go somewhere and not coming back, you know. So it's a... Uh, but you know, it's a, it's a part of the game. So we got to adjust to it. We got to make, uh, at the end of the day, we still got to make it better pitches. Meanwhile, Joe Madden's trying to keep his group loose with the playoff race starting to heat up. The next road trip they take out west, the Cubs will be traveling in onesies and PJs. This week's theme is Legion Week. Madden says he just wants his players to go out there, play hard, and have fun like they did back in high school. There's certain things that we do in this game that I think are overrated, and I think batting practice is one of them. Uh, swinging way too much. If they need to get loose, they could go get loose down in the cage a little bit. Uh, they don't need to swing on the field. Um, ground balls, they've taken a ton of those. Um, they, they, they could play catch. They could get run and get loose. Um, so I, I really think that sometimes we, we play that up a little bit too much. Um, I'd much prefer a fresh mind and body right now. Madden was asked afterwards if part of Legion Week included ice cream after the game. If they win, he said, absolutely. So I'm putting it, I hope he's keeping his word on this, and I hope the media is involved in that because I put in a request, mint chip, chocolate chip cookie dough. Perfect night for baseball and ice cream at the ballpark. Live at Wrigley, Luke Stuckmeyer. Pat, we'll send it back to you. Luke, win or lose, after every one of your reports, you always have ice cream. I've seen you at the United Center, and you definitely like to go for the second scoop of ice cream. Chocolate chip cookie dough. All right, so don't rain in the forecast, Stucky. Look forward to your reports throughout tonight's festivities. Time for our Coldwell Banker home field advantage. Chris Bryant coming off a four-hit performance at Wrigley last night. Raises average at home to 288, 55 points higher than his batting average on the road. Cubs rookie is nine doubles, four triples, 14 jacks at home, and his OPS is 1,000.
Time for you to get interactive with the show. Tonight's Twitter question, are you concerned with the Cubs starting pitching? Use the hashtag Cubs Talk when tweeting your response. We'll check in with some of those later in the show. Time for our Bears preseason coverage. It's brought to you by Apt Electronics, Appliances, and more. The Bears finished their second day of practice with the Colts. The biggest news out of Indy for John Fox's crew was that Charles Leno practiced with the first teamers at right tackle, replacing Jordan Mills, who worked with the twos. Should be interesting to see who gets the start in Saturday's preseason tilt between those two. And if they're not comfortable with either Leno or Mills, there has been talk of moving Kyle Long to right tackle. Yesterday, Jay Cutler said the Colts D got the best of his unit. Cutler had some interceptions in the red zone today. While Andrew Luck and the Colts offense moved the ball against the Bears 3-4 scheme. Safety Antrell Roll on going up against Luck. I love going against Luck, man. You know, I think he's definitely one of the best quarterbacks in this league. Um, you know, he's he's very, very wise, you know, beyond his age. Um, he runs a, runs a very efficient offense. He's very great at licking off defenders. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's very important, you know, his decision making. You know, he's a hell of a quarterback. He can run, he can sit in the pocket. Um, so it's different angles at how you'll have to rush him. And, you know, instead of going against Jay every day in practice, you got to be disciplined in your rush where you can't go too high. Andrew will take off, or you can't come on the too early, he'll take off. And, you know, he, he's a great quarterback. Joining us now from Indy, Adam Hogue, Bears insider for WGN Radio. Adam, on Wednesday, Jay Cutler said the Colts defense took day one. Who looked better on day two? Well, I, I think the Bears defense performed a little bit better today, and I think... It was maybe closer today, but right at the end of practice, we saw the Colts march up and down the field in the two-minute drill uh, with ease, and then Jimmy Clausen threw an interception on his first snap with a two. So it kind of got ugly for the Bears at the end. So if you had to pick a winner today, it was probably the Colts. But I think overall, the Bears were happier uh, with their performance in the second practice. Tell Sean Jeffrey and Kevin White on the sidelines. We know Eddie Royals looked pretty good. Give us your kind of your wide receiver depth chart at this point. Yeah, I mean, I still put Jeffrey number one. He he should be back for the start of the regular season. But from there, I mean, Eddie Royal's really your number two guy. He's probably going to line up outside and inside in the slot. And then Marquise Wilson's kind of got to be able to do those same things, and he's probably your number three. From there, it's interesting. You know, will Josh Bellamy stick? He's probably the next guy up alongside Mark Mariani, who has an edge because he's probably, well, I don't know if they made a decision at returner, but he's certainly the leader in the clubhouse as the kick returner. So that gives him an edge as well. I know a lot of fans like what they saw in Cam Meredith, the rookie out of Illinois State uh, last week in the preseason game. He's got an outside chance, but maybe is ultimately a practice squad guy. Adam, what position battle are you focusing on most Saturday night's game against the Colts? Well, Brock Vereen did not perform well in the first preseason game as he got his opportunities with the starters at safety alongside Antrell Roll. Adrian Amos, the rookie out of Penn State, is getting the chance this week. Uh, it'll be, you know, it's been kind of hard to really evaluate that in practice because you can't tackle. So the, the game on Saturday will be huge for Adrian Amos. It's kind of his week to show what he can do. Brock Vereen didn't perform up to expectations. We'll see if Adrian Amos can do it. Otherwise, they probably go to Ryan Mundy, the veteran who actually had a pretty good year last year, I thought, and has played alongside Antrell Roll before. They played together in New York. So ultimately, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the pairing. Adam Hogue, great stuff as always. We'll be following your work on WGN Radio. We'll see you when you get back to Chicago. All right, thanks, Pat. Back to baseball around the corner while the North Siders look to maintain their hold on the second wild card spot. The team pursuing him, the Giants acquired a former North Sider today. We'll have the details. Jeff Samarja turned in his best performance since the trade deadline last night in Anaheim. But the end result was the same. Plus, Kenny Williams weighs in on his future in the Sox front office. And the Southsiders are going retro next week, but we'll tell you why the Sox people won't get the full 1976 experience. This is Sportsnet Central. Bears preseason coverage is presented by APT, electronics, appliances, and more since 1936. Sportsnet Central, brought to you by Comcast Business. Comcast Business, built for business. This is a great place to work, not because they have yoga meetings and a juice bar, 
because they're getting Comcast Business Internet. Comcast Business offers convenient installation appointments that work around your schedule. And it takes done about an hour. Get reliable internet that's up to five times faster than DSL from the phone company. Call 800-501-6000 to switch today. Perks are nice, but the best thing you can give your business is Comcast Business. Comcast Business. Built for business. No juggling clowns. It's just intense Molly and saving during Schomburg Kia Three Ring Circus of Savings. Lisa totally transformed 2015 Kia Soul. Highest rank compact in initial quality for just $89 a month. We'll top any deal on a new Kia. Bob Rorman, Schaumburg Kia, just west of the Woodfield Mall on Gulf Road in Schaumburg. When you're tired, a great tasting five hour energy is just the thing. But what if you're tired and thirsty? Water. Precisely. Delicious and refreshing. <sighs> wow, that tastes amazing. That's really good. Drink it straight or sip it slow. Have you tried great tasting five hour energy lately? Hey, you want to share a cab? No, I'm good. From the people who brought you underwhelming internet speeds and the people who brought you temperamental satellite television. Introducing underwhelming internet speeds and temperamental television in one. to the moment no one's been waiting for. The fastest internet and the best TV experience is already here with X1, only from Xfinity. We're back on Sportsnet Central. Jake Arrieta comes into tonight's action against the Braves. The string of 11 straight quality starts, a stretch that goes back almost two months now. In those 11 games, he's 8-1 with a 1.35 ERA. Cup skipper Joe Madden says his righty should be in the discussion for the Cy Young Award. He's got everything going on with command. And uh, and he's strong because he could finish what he begins. So there's there's so much positive rolling there with him right now. Um, he's got to be in consideration for all those things. He's among the elite pitchers in the National League, probably in baseball. And beyond that, when it comes to awards at the end of the year, he has to be considered strongly. Did he go? Did he go? Yes, he did. To San Francisco, Giants acquired former Cub Marlon Byrd from the Reds today for a minor league pitcher. Byrd batting 237 this season, but his 19 homers and 42 RBI in 96 games. We'll have the Cubs and Braves for you at the top of the hour right here on CSN. Gordon Whitmire from the Sun-Times joins us now live from Wrigley Field. Gordon, let's start with Cubs starting pitching. It's been a rough week. Do they have enough, especially at the back end of that rotation, to get them to the postseason? Well, a lot of what's going to happen at the back end of the rotation is going to be dependent on the front end of the rotation in this regard. If Arietta, who's already at a uh, career high in innings pitched, can maintain what he's done, if last night's start was an aberration for Lester, and there's no reason to think it wasn't, and he could continue to give you innings, that makes the bullpen in much better shape for the other three starters, which allows you to do much more uh, in terms of uh, matchup situations, quick hooks, uh, things like that in the middle innings. So if the front two guys can set the pace, then you, you need to lean a little bit less on the other three guys. Now, that said, is there enough back there? Jason Hamill's got to find it again. He was outstanding early in the season, but since he had a leg injury last month, he's been struggling to find his form. Um, they don't think it's physical. They think his stuff is, is, is good. His fastball's strong. His stuff is, is as good as it's been all year, but he hasn't found his form, his delivery, and Kyle Hendricks is going through something mechanical, too. So that's a big deal. Heron is what he is. You're going to get the same from him. It's uh, 86 miles an hour. It's, you know, minimized damage. He's going to give up a few home runs, but hopefully guys aren't on base, that kind of thing. So you really need to get something out of those four guys before you get the Heron, which you get from him is a little bit of a bonus and some innings. So do they have enough? There's a lot of assu assuming this, assuming that, and a, and, and a few other things. Uh, yeah, but it's still a long ways to go. Let's go to the bullpen, Gordon. Where's your confidence level there, beginning with Pedro Strope? I think Strope is okay. Again, you know, what's happening here in the, with the entire pitching staff is a workload issue in large part. You know, uh, you've, seen, you've seen the way uh, Joe's handled a, 
a starting rotation that's had depth issues all along. He's, he's, he's had quick hooks with guys, even the guys like Arietta and Lester at times. The, the bullpen's got a lot of work. That's why you've seen extra bodies out there all year long. So now that we've gotten into these later stages of the season, five, six, seven weeks to go, that's when you start to see it show up. That might be part of what we're seeing. Uh, Strope, if, if you can if you can limit his pitches, limit his, his, his appearances down the road where you can, you, you might catch a second win with him. I think he's fine. I think his stuff-wise, he's fine. But the innings are piling up. The appearances are piling up. Same with a lot of guys. So, again, it's all about not getting overworked and about, you know, it's a domino effect with a pitching staff, especially the way this team is set up, especially with the lack of depth this team has. It really starts at the top of the pitching staff, and the domino effect goes all the way through the bullpen. Lastly, Gordon, if uh, you're in a one-game playoff against the Pittsburgh Pirates, who are you handing the ball to, Arietta or Lester? Well, I'm going to assume that Garrett Cole is going to start for Pittsburgh, and he's going to give you all kinds of trouble. It's probably going to be a low-scoring game on your end of it. I would go with, I know how great Jake Arietta's pitching, assuming that Lester continues, it, not last night's performance, but maybe the, the eight starts before that, assuming he's John Lester the rest of the year, even with the throwing to bases issues, I think you hand the ball to him. You have to, you, you, you really want a guy that's been there before. This guy's pitching in World Series on the biggest stages of all. You, you cannot afford a 32-35 pitch first inning when you're struggling to limit him to a run or two and you fall behind early in a game like that, a one-and-done type of a game. So I would go with the guy that's been there, give him the ball, and then if you win that, by the time you get to the second game, sort of the team jitters uh, of this first uh, playoff uh, uh, go-around for most of these guys is gone. Gordon Whitmire, thank you for joining us. We'll be following you on Twitter and in the Sun-Times. That ball hit deep. Melky. So it is one nothing. Only blemish for Jeff Samarja last night was that Carlos Perez home run. Sox hitters couldn't get anything going as they were blanked by Jared Weaver and lost their third straight to the Angels when nothing was the final. While it wasn't a win for the Southsiders, the Shark felt he made some improvement over his last few starts. You know, I'm happy with with the fact that, you know, what had been getting me in trouble before was giving up little hits, uh, you know, infield hits and things like that, letting it get to me, and, and then it's snowballing. So, you know, I wanted to go out there and stay in control of the game and, and continue to make big pitches and, and, you know, regardless of the results, just keep doing that. And, that, and I was very pleased with how that went. And, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, I'm more disappointed in falling behind 2-0, you know, than the pitch that happened and, and, and the result. It's, uh, you know, when you're in attack mode, they're 0-0. You know, you need to be ahead in the counter, at least 1-1 one, one there. That takes us to Built for Business, presented by Comcast Business. Last night was Samarja's best performance since the trade deadline. In his three previous August starts, the Shark had allowed 22 earned runs in 15 in a third frame. Prez Homer, the sixth long ball Samarja has allowed this month. Comcast Business, Built for Business. We're not staying out of White Sox business. USA Today's Bob Nightingale reported that Kenny Williams could be enticed to leave his role as president of the Sox for a front office gig with Toronto, Seattle, or possibly Philadelphia. Kenny emailed the Tribune today in response to those rumors saying, quote, the only thing in my future is a 905 game against the Angels tonight in Anaheim and the start of 10 straight wins in a playoff spot, end quote. Next Thursday night, the Sox will wear collared throwback uniforms for that 1976 season, but it's not the complete uniform. They're not wearing the shorts that they wore just one time. Cubs Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg was on the Mag Mile this morning as the city paid tribute to the first lady of Chicago baseball, Dutchie Carey. And Tiger Woods' worst professional season could turn around with a top two finish in Carolina. We had a great first round today as a former number one tries to fight his way into the PGA postseason.
code red. Code red. We're code red. Come on. Laundry room is there. How bad is it? Oh. She took a juice box right to the face. Oh, Clear. Okay, so. What about backup Lammy? This is backup Lammy. Okay. All right. Go. Go, 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 go. Get your head right. Don't let her see the fear in your eyes. Okay. See the new line of Samsung Active Wash washers at Apt. Do you live in America? Then you have the right to get out of debt. You can eliminate or reorganize and protect houses, vehicles, pension, and other assets. I'm attorney Peter Francis Geraci. America's debt-free law is called the United States Bankruptcy Code, and we're one of the oldest and largest debt relief agencies in America. Call us or click now. If you're worried about debt, call now to see if you qualify. 1-800-401-4010. Great time for a shiny floor wax, no? Not if you just put the finishing touches on your latest masterpiece. Timing's important. Comcast Business knows that. That's why you can schedule an installation at a time that works for you, even late at night or on the weekend if that's what you need, because you have enough to worry about. I did not see that coming. Don't deal with disruptions. Get better internet installed on your schedule. Comcast Business. Built for business. Go to CSNChicago.com to watch the latest installment of That Sports Thing with Chris Mars. It's actors and comedians talking sports. It's a sports thing presented by Miller Lite. New episodes available at CSNChicago.com. <laughs> This morning, the city of Chicago unveiled Honorary Dutchie Carey Way as the, at the corner of Michigan and East Pearson. City calls Carey the first lady of Chicago baseball. Ryan Sandberg was also there. So was Chip Carey. The widow of the late Harry Carey was honored by the recognition. I'd like to thank the Cubs for all they have done for me too. It, it's just a, a privilege. And the city of Chicago is a, absolutely fantastic. They've always been really, really nice to me. And I, I don't really know, uh, really I don't know why I've gotten this privilege, but I sure do appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody coming out and thank you all very much. <laughs> To golf, Tiger Woods playing in the Wyndham Championship for the first time. He needs a top two finish to make the FedEx Cup. Tenth hole, which was his first of the day. How about this for Birdie? That was a sign of things to come. Later on, number four, Woods, the bid. He starts walking thinking he missed it, but it falls. Then Woods gives it a little uh, Jordan-esque shrug. Tiger shoots a six under, 64, best round in two years. He is two shots off the lead. We're coming back to wrap up Sportsnet Central after this. This is a great place to work. Not because they have yoga meetings in a juice bar. Because they're getting Comcast Business Internet. Comcast Business offers convenient installation appointments that work around your schedule. And it takes? Done. About an hour. Get reliable internet that's up to five times faster than DSL from the phone company. Call 800-501-6000 to switch today. Perks are nice, but the best thing you can give your business is Comcast Business. Comcast Business. Built for business. Frigidaire Professional Products at Apt. Apt, pleasing people since 1936. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt.
There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Attention, Xarelto users. Have you or a loved one taken the blood thinner Xarelto and then suffered internal bleeding resulting in hospitalization or death? Xarelto has no specific antidote for uncontrolled bleeding approved by the FDA. This may make an uncontrolled bleed or hemorrhage a serious medical problem. If you or a loved one has taken Xarelto and suffered an injury involving hospitalization or death, call right now. Call 1-800-363-9018. That's 1-800-363-9018. I know you're wondering, where in the world is the Stanley Cup? Well, the trophy remains in Europe today. It was with Marian Hossa in Trenton, Slovakia. Number 81 showed off the trophy to some young fans in his homeland and some hockey players. Reports say Hossa ate a pierogi out of Lord Stanley. How about that? Told you earlier in the show, Bears and Colts practiced together for the second straight day in Indy. Bears had trouble with... Indianapolis's offense during today's drills, but they believe this experience will ultimately benefit them in the long run. They wanted the two-minute drill, so that's really the only thing that matters. You know, it's not about how you start, it's how you finish. And uh, you know, it, it was a good, it was a good atmosphere. You know, to come out here for the last couple of days and, and practice against these guys, man. You know, just get a different, get a different feel for things. I thought all in all, it was a great, great couple of days of practice. I thought uh, today was another one as well. You know, I think um, you know we're probably not as oiled up in two-minute drill as uh, as Indy is at this stage, but um, you know, all in all, I was very pleased. Our Twitter question, are you concerned about the Cubs starting pitching? Chris said not concerned whatsoever. Lots of ebbs and flows. Nick says no because the starting pitching has been consistent for most of the year. Just a bump in the road. Nobody more consistent in that rotation than tonight's starter, Jake Arrieta. That's all the time we have. Cubs and Braves coming your way next. Thanks for watching Sportsnet Central. See you later. Posted. Hashtag TBT. Loved this car until I was upside down on my payments. Hashtag expensive fad. Wow, you've aged great. Find a car to match, like the Civic, at the Honda Summer Clearance Event. With a rear view camera and text message reader standard, it's as modern as they come and won't break the bank. It needs flames! Please ignore him. Hurry in to the Honda Summer Clearance Event for a great deal on your new Honda. There's so many details that go into building an asymmetric surfboard. Designing things for myself at first was really an exciting thing. But watching somebody else ride something I made, I mean, that's really where it's at. There are lots of ways, you know, to refresh the world. But in the end, I just want to give people something they can enjoy. When he wakes up, he'll be an internet sensation. But you could still be waiting two years to upgrade your phone. Your phone is old and weird. Here, use this. It'll make me look even better. To stalk handsome celebrities, you'll need to get the latest phone. Introducing Jump On Demand. Get the lowest price anywhere on iPhone 6. Just 15 bucks a month. Then upgrade when you want for $0 out the door. Yeah, you just got to advertise that. Ford F-150, and this changes everything. And so does this. Drive any new 2015 Ford F-150 with 0% financing for 72 months. See your local Ford dealer today.
beautiful night here on the north side as we bring you Chicago Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. The Cubs welcome in the Atlanta Braves. It's the first of a four-game series here on CSN. And great to have you with us along with Jim Deshaies. I'm Len Casper. The Cubs have dropped their last three. The Braves are playing out the string right now. Cubs in pretty good position in the playoff chase. So you get swept in a two-gamer by the Tigers, but a chance to hit the reset button tonight. Uh, yeah, and the Tigers just blew into town and started hitting the ball out of the ballpark. They scored 25 runs in two games, had 40 hits, hit eight home runs. Everybody went deep for the Tigers except for Dick McAuliffe. <laughs> so the Cubs need a stopper. And they're going to hand the ball to Jake Arrieta tonight. He's been very good in that role the last couple of seasons. We're going to show you some numbers to support that. 24 starts after a Cubs loss the last two years. He's 12 and 3 with a 2.38 ERA this year in his last 11 starts. Quality work each time. He's 8 and 1 with a buck 35. Young right-hander Mike fulton who's from nearby Manuka, Illinois, will get the ball for the Braves. Arietta tries to become baseball's first 15-game winner. Braves and Cubs are next. Busy. It's worn like a badge. Coming in early, staying really late. When did leaving work on time become an act of courage? Sometimes it takes a fearless choice to wake people up. Can a CUV provoke change? You have no idea. Introducing the all-new Hyundai Tucson, the official pace car of living. When it comes to fulfilling our customers' expectations, Gerald Subaru of North Aurora has earned a reputation for excellence. We are one of an elite group of Subaru dealers awarded the Subaru Stellar Care Award for excellence in customer satisfaction. Gerald Subaru of North Aurora has one of the largest Subaru inventories in Chicagoland, which means you can drive home today in the Subaru of your choice. Plus, all Gerald vehicles are covered by an exclusive lifetime warranty. Gerald Subaru of North Aurora is dedicated to you. Gerald Subaru of North Aurora is always a better deal. I guarantee it. It's the Gerald Kia Grand Opening Celebration. Come and share in our celebration as we open new doors on Aurora and Ogden Avenue in Naperville. We're celebrating by giving you the biggest discounts of the year with the largest inventory in Chicagoland, backed by Gerald's exclusive lifetime warranty. Gerald Kia will serve you better. Come test drive a new Kia today and see why Gerald Kia is the 2015 National Dealer of the Year for excellence in customer satisfaction. Come in today to celebrate the grand opening of the all-new Gerald Kia of Naperville. Cubs Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. AT&T U-verse. find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PIG-ATT, mobilizing your world. Ford, check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Back here at Wrigley Field, the wind right now is blowing straight out toward right. It may shift, however, as the evening moves along. It has uh, cooled off a bit here in the city. Kind of has that September flavor, even though it's only August the 20th. So Jake Arietta gets set to work. Against the Atlanta Braves Cubs took two of three in Atlanta in mid-July coming right out of the all-star break And now the Braves starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Nick Markakis will be in the leadoff spot They are struggling in terms of scoring runs Cameron Mavens had a good year. He's in center Freddie Freeman yesterday came back from his second DL stint AJ Przinski is in the cleanup spot Adonis Garcia is playing third. Jace Peterson at second. Andrelton Simmons, one of the best in the business with the glove at short. He hits seventh. Michael Bourne recently uh, acquired his second go around with the Braves. And Mike fulton the pitcher, will bat ninth. Cubs defensively are positioned thusly. Schwarber, Fowler, Soler, left center, right. Infield alignment of Bryant Russell, Coglin Rizzo, third to first. Miguel Montero. The hind catcher tonight and our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Big Jake Arietta. He's tied for the league lead in wins. He's fourth in the league in ERA. Top five in strikeouts, innings pitched. Just been a ter terrific season for him. So 
So 14 and 6 with a 239 as he takes the mound here tonight. Doug Eddings is a home plate umpire. Adrian Johnson at first. Bill Miller, the crew chief, at second. And Ben May is at third. So There's a whole Ivan Mike Costello Davis. thing going there. He could be the umpire with the who's on first. And he the, may, ben may or may not. Yeah. Cubs trying to end a three-game losing streak. Braves coming in from San Diego where they got swept. And away we go. Strike one. On Marcakis. Braves have been really bad on the road. They've been swept seven times on the road. Just 21 and 43 overall. Diving stop. Rizzo and Arietta covering. Nicely done for the first out. Well, wind blowing out. There's some left-handed hitters in this Braves lineup, so you want to keep the ball on the ground. Jake Arietta is very good at doing that. He gets a lot of ground outs, gets a lot of strikeouts. That always plays, and it really comes in handy in a night when the wind is blowing out. Nice pick by the big fella. Yeah, there's a 30 game spread for the Braves between their home record and their road record. They're eight games better than 500 at home, but 22 below 500 on the road. They've lost 18 of their last 20 road games. And I was looking through their day by day earlier, and I believe they've won only three road series all season. Mm. Freddie Gonzalez. In his fifth year as the Braves manager, they're ramping up to 2017 when they'll open their new ballpark. Two balls, no strikes on Cameron Maben. Now two and one. 95 miles an hour from Jake, working on a streak of 11 consecutive quality starts. Eight and one with a 135 during this great stretch. If he wins tonight, he'll be the first guy to get 15 victories in the majors. Rizzo makes the play. The Cubs uh, starting pitchers in the last three games have allowed three home runs each, each of those games. Yeah. Um, so obviously a trend that you need to stop. Arietta has allowed only nine home runs all year. And that run you just referenced, 11 starts, just one home run in, the, in those 11 ball games. And on top of that, the Braves have hit 74 home runs, fewest among all major league teams. But they get a little help with Freddie Freeman back. We did not see him in that series in Atlanta in July. He was on the DL. Missed 30 games with a wrist injury, came back, played 10, and then got hurt again in oblique. 43 games missed total between the two stints. <laughs> 0 and 2. Uh, Jake's second start against the Braves. He pitched in that series in Atlanta right after the All Star break, and he pitched seven shutout innings, allowed three hits, punched out 10. Freeman held. Anecdotally, I can tell you, Freddie Freeman. Hits a lot of line drives toward the middle of the diamond. And the Cubs kind of pinching that area with Russell and Coglin. We've seen uh, Freeman over the last few years had a lot of line outs to Cubs middle infielders. It's bounced foul. So 71 degrees. Just a love gorgeous oh, night. Man. Night for a dog and a beverage. We'll be keeping a close watch all weekend on a big series in Pittsburgh. The Giants and the Pirates. The Cubs are trailing the Pirates and they're ahead of the Giants. 
It's one nothing Pittsburgh in the bottom of the third. It's Jake Peavy and Charlie Morton matching up this evening. Cubs are three ahead of San Francisco, four behind Pittsburgh. Busy inning for Rizzo. And he makes all the plays, and that'll do it for the Braves. Coming up, the Cubs against Mike fulton -Evich. Hey, Chicago. Did you know that we can fly you internationally from midway to your favorite places in Mexico, Belize, Costa Rica, and the Caribbean? You didn't? Well, that's why we're here. Ta-da! Chicago, you have lots of sunny options. So long stateside, hello, lots of sunny opportunities. Book now at southwest.com. The McDonald's Jalapeno Double is made with tangy ranch and savory white cheddar for a cool, creamy taste. But it's also loaded with sliced and crispy jalapenos, so it can get pretty hot. That's why we created the all-new Jalapeno McChicken. Actually, that's pretty hot, too. Try the Jalapeno Double and the all-new Jalapeno McChicken. Now just $2 each at McDonald's. Posted. Dogs grew, car didn't. Hashtag Great Dane Problems. Wow, how old are they? Eight months. You're gonna need a CRV, and you can find a great deal on one at the Honda Summer Clearance event. The CRV is Motor Trend's 2015 Sport Utility of the Year and a 2015 IIHS Top Safety Pick. Oh, he likes it. Perfect. Hurry in to the Honda Summer Clearance event for a great deal on your new Honda. Too often you score eight runs in back-to-back -back games and lose both, but that's what happened to the Cubs against Detroit. Their Southwest starting lineup. Fowler has been red hot as of late. He and Schwarber uh, homered last night. Chris coughlin has been in a hot stretch. Anthony Rizzo cleans up. Chris Bryant, four hits last night for the first time in his young career. Montero catches. He'll hit ahead of Soler, moves down to seven. Arietta the pitcher, and Russell, the shortstop. Bravos defensively. Boy, what an outfield they've got with the Bourne, a natural center fielder covering left. Mabins in center. Marquecas had a long, long arrowless streak. He's out there in right. And Len mentioned Simmons, maybe the best in the business defensively. Garcia joins him on the left side of the infield. Peterson and Freeman on the right side. A.J. Przinski behind the plate. And a big right-hander, Mike fulton Nevich, 23 years of age. 13 starts, three appearances out of the pen. He's combined to go four and four with a 5.61 ERA. And if tonight's Cubs leadoff man and his Dexter Fowler gets a hit, then he's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to Make a Wish Illinois. Ground ball to Peterson, the second baseman, and he makes the play. Fulton Evich is a, a local kid from. Uh, Born in Sterling, went to Manuka yep. High School. Did I say Manuka? Manuka. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> when he was announced before the game, there's a large group making a lot of noise down there on his behalf. So there's probably some extra butterflies for him. Former first round pick of the Astros. That was uh, June of 2010. Number 19 overall. He's got a fastball that has reached 100 miles per hour. Sits comfortably around 95. Another ground ball. Peterson knocks it down. From a knee, he gets him. Schwarber actually hurt his chances because he hit it so hard. Peterson had some time. Off the end of his glove, but he rolls over and keeps it uh, in the vicinity and able to recover and make the play. So if there's an early theme here tonight, it's ground balls to the right side of the infield. <laughs> Braves hit three, Cubs have hit two now. You see, Fulton Nevitz uh, has been much more of a fly ball pitcher. Uh, the home runs have been an issue for him. He's only pitched 77 big league innings this year, but he's allowed 15 home runs already. Ninety nine miles an hour and up and out of the zone. And Chris Coughlin. 
Well, that is crisp stuff. <laughs> Firm, as uh, Joe would like to say. Yeah, and he's uh, obviously got to be amped up. Yeah, I was over. I was in Houston when they drafted him, and they were very high on him. Uh, he was traded to Atlanta. The deal that sent Evan Gaddis to Houston. Um, and, and now that John Hart has taken over as the general manager of the Braves, that's kind of been the M.O. for Atlanta since Hart came on board. They're acquiring a lot of talented young arms. Split. Good spoiler there by Coglin. And I think <clears throat> Fulton Evich at a point in his career still doesn't have a lot of major league experience. He was up with uh, Houston last year, made 16 relief appearances. If the Braves were in contention, they might be taking that big right arm and, and putting him down in the bullpen. But now that they're out of it, I think it's a chance to, for him to develop and work on his secondary pitches. Six four two twenty. Facing the Cubs for the first time. Throws that fastball on the first pitch about seventy five percent of the time, so you've got to be ready to hit the gas. One on the ground. This time it's Andrelton Simmons. And each starter one two three all ground out first. It's a golden opportunity to discover the leading edge connectivity of the Lexus ES. With available technology to help you find just what you're looking for. Come into the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event, where you'll find some of the best offers of the year on our most luxurious models. Lease the 2015 ES350 for $329 a month for 36 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. Genetically modified and bred with a panther. With turbines attached. On ice. Shaved with a... What the... With the fastest speeds to the most homes, the company that keeps making fast, faster, is doing it again. Introducing multi-gig speeds from Xfinity. The future of awesome. There is no room in baseball for errors and mental mistakes. Scouting is an important part of baseball, but, but stop, stop, stop. But it's also an important part of that. Just trying to get them loose. If, uh, how about a head first slide next time, man? That'd be awesome. If you can't find it at Vinny's, it's probably not worth drinking. You're a parent, I'm a colonel, we're both busy people. So pick up my new hand-prepared $20 family fill-up meal. Eight pieces of original recipe chicken, two large mashed potatoes and gravy, a large coleslaw, and four biscuits. I'll get back to you. It's finger licking good. It is Firefighter Appreciation Night. Uh, that fire engine, that truck, uh, survived 9-11. And uh, here outside the ballpark tonight, and we also want to take the time to honor Michael Dernals of uh, the Hammond Fire Department, sadly passed away in March from colon cancer, uh, was an avid Cubs fan, and our sincere condolences to his firehouse, especially to his family, including his wife, Tracy, and son, Trevor. AJ Przinski fouls away. He has had quite a year, 38 years old, 18th Major League season. Getting 350 since July the 5th. He's put up big numbers against Jake Arietta. Seven out of 11 with two home runs. Breaking ball from Marietta. Kaczynski is kind of a swing first guy. Doesn't walk much. Doesn't strike out very much either.
lifetime 280 and change hitter. So he, he, he's one of those guys that has a plan when he goes up there and he's willing to sacrifice power to put the ball in play with two strikes, as you just saw. July 8th in Atlanta, he broke up John Lester's retroactive no hitter. And the leadoff single in the eighth that Marcakis had reached uh, in the first on what was originally called an infield hit later cha changed to an error on Chris Bryant hence kicking in that no hitter in the late innings it was rather dramatic and uh, AJ reveled in breaking up the no hit bid I believe we had a shot of him saying not on my watch that was most of it and I left out a an extra word or two. <laughs> Conveying the message. Yes, that's true. Just saying in the, in the guise of accuracy. Three and two on him. Adonis Garcia is on deck. Yeah, it was a rough series against Detroit. Cubs allowing at least 19 hits in back-to-back -back games for the first time since the year 2000. As Coughlin play the one hopper. Another ground ball to the right side. Here's Garcia from Cuba, 30 years old. Signed originally with the Yankees. Was released by New York. This year in April, signed with Atlanta a week later. In his major league debut in May. And right now he's holding down that third base position until Hector Oliveira gets here. Oliveira signed last year with the Dodgers to a huge contract. He's from Cuba as well. And the Braves got him in the blockbuster deal in late July. And Oliveira had a hamstring injury, so he's been on a rehab assignment. He just got promoted to AAA. He could be with the Braves as early as Monday. And it sounds like once he gets here, he's going to take over and play at third every day. Yeah, well, there were people earlier this year clamoring for the Dodgers to call him up. As he was tearing it up in AAA. And you know, he's not a kid signed out of Cuba a polished hitter uh, and the Braves they had to you know, go down the depth chart a little bit because they've traded two third baseman Chris Johnson Juan Uribe were here now gone Johnson to Cleveland Uribe to uh, the Mets and what does that say about the Dodgers they, they gave Oliveira prior to this year a six year deal worth sixty two and a half million including a signing bonus that they paid out twenty eight million and then Never even brought him up to the big leagues before moving him. That tells you they have a lot of money. Yeah. Called yeah. strike three. He didn't ground out. Well, he, yeah, he's, he's an outlier. He thinks outside the box. So I guess the Braves had their, their eye on Oliveira and had off made him an offer. What was the deal? I'm trying to think of the deal, the uh, trade. So Jim Johnson went to the Dodgers. Uh, it was Jim Johnson. It was Alex Wood. It was uh, Luis Avilan. That was a big trade. So the Dodgers had to give something up to get what they got. Well, the Dodgers. It's, it's kind of the thing where the Dodgers have spent so much money. I think they just get to the point where, well, we, we, we can't do everything possible to try to win this thing. So we'll, we'll just keep throwing more money at it if need be. And that was really when that, when that new ownership group came in. I remember reading a story where Stan Kasten said, money is not an object. We will spend whatever it takes to get it done. Mm -hmm. Bronson Arroyo. Currently reacting from Tommy John was involved in that deal as well. So Rizzo made three plays in the first, cannot knock down that ground ball, and Jace Peterson is aboard. And here is Antrelton Simmons. 
a premier defensive shortstop. Whatever he gives you offensively, you gladly take. He is a walking highlight reel, though, with the glove. Some there, you know, there have been some guys over the years that are outstanding defensively, and they just don't give you enough offensively, and they become backup guys. Simmons, Simmons isn't there. I mean, he, he is enough of a hitter where you justify putting him in that lineup every day because he is so good defensively. I think about a guy like a John McDonald. Um, well, years ago, Raphael Belliard with his Braves club, mm -hmm. you know, defensive wizard, and just didn't hit much. I guess kind of the, the question for the, the guys who crunch the numbers is how bad would he have to beat offensively to not have him play every day because of his defense. They'll get the out at second baseball reference his defensive war already this year. He's been worth almost three wins scoreless early. formula Menards and Dutch boy make transforming your world easy go Dutch Dutch boy platinum paint available at Menards cash for life a fan favorite from the Illinois lottery is back stop by your nearest Illinois lottery retailer and play today you could win up to five thousand dollars a week for the rest of your life cash for life the longer you live the more you get Hey, what's going on there? Len Casper dress alike co uh, competition? No. I'm going to say no on that. Mamas and the Papas, maybe? Um, possibly. Yeah, that's got the late 60s vibe. This is not a theme night tonight, is it, uh, here at the ballpark? There's no. kind of a 90s thing coming up one of these days. 1-0 on Anthony Rizzo. Swings through 97. Trying to lift that heater, trying to take advantage of this wind blowing out to right, something that has rarely happened this year. A little bit. Look at, look at that. Uh, the pitch tracks, the previous two fastballs that were called 
Balls appeared to catch the inside corner. Certainly number three did. This one well off the outside edge. I think that's Doug Eddings being influenced by Rizzo's proximity to the plate. See, none of those inside corner calls he got because they were so close to Anthony. But the Fulton Evans got the pitch off the outside part of the plate. And we'll bring up Chris Bryant. Four for four, a homer, a triple, two RBIs, two runs. I'm overshadowed because of the way that the game turned out, 15 to 8. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, the Cubs gave up a lot of runs the last two nights, but they did a lot of good things, too. You score eight runs a night. Some guys are uh, getting the job done in the batter's box. So during the Cubs eight game winning streak nine nine they allowed 28 runs wow. these last two games they allowed 25 I'm gonna have to do the math again did you only go eight games back well, I, went, I, I just I, I started with the W no, I got all nine okay uh, yeah I, I looked at this today uh, the Cubs have scored six runs or more in 32 games. They're 29 and three. Two of those losses coming this week. Yeah, head scratcher. You're right, Joe. Joe had the best line after the game. He said, "I'm just glad it wasn't a three-game series." Oh, the Tigers were swinging the bats. That was some serious foul. carnage. But today uh, kicks off uh, American Legion week for Joe Madden. He closes the clubhouse. Nobody allowed to enter before three o'clock. Get his guys to spend a little more time at home, shake up the routine a little bit. Both managers got into the spirit as uh, Freddie Gonzalez after the late night arrival from San Diego. They had a 4:45 team bus, so there was no on-field batting practice tonight. Less is more. Freddie threatened to find guys if they showed up before five o'clock. One and two. And a couple of Cubs, I'll uh, say a player, a coach, will be unnamed, tried to show up early today and <laughs> no go. We were met at the door by the, uh, <laughs> the guy from the Wizard of Oz poking his head out. Sorry. Go away. Two balls, two strikes. It's funny, isn't it? How many other industries or lines of work where the boss would tell you you're banned from coming in? You know, take a take a half day. And People trying to sneak in the back door. <laughs> Just can't keep themselves away. Three and two. Yeah, well, you know, we're all creatures of habit in this game, creatures of habit. And guys just get used to that routine, and it's like inertia. You know, you get up, you have your coffee, you whatever you do, and you go to the ballpark, go to the ball. And Joe's saying, you know, it, it can get stale. And so Joe's point, and Freddie Gonzalez as well, you got to just change it up a little bit. Rizzo not running. Ball not hit hard enough that they will get one. That's a nifty little play by Simmons. I thought he might just take the out at first, but he had enough time to get Rizzo at second. This guy plays every day. He's only made three errors all year. And the last one coming sometime back in the middle of June. You know, moves through the ball, keeps the glove low, reads the play, has a great internal clock, knows he's got time. Quick little flip to second base to get the lead man. By the way, I am speaking completely out of school here because I haven't done a lot of research, but looking just at some of the, the Simmons stats, I think he'd have to be a horrid hitter. I mean, almost pitcher-like to take him yeah, out of the lineup. Yeah, well. yeah, he's been that good defensively. 
Yeah, I think he's one of those guys where you check the li your, your bucket list of what you need on your team. Oh, yeah, we've been outstanding short of it. Okay, now let's build around him. You know, we need to find a, a more offensive-minded second baseman and, and you know, wh wh wherever you can add to pick up the slack for what you know you're not getting from him offensively. Two on Montero. Hey, you've probably noticed uh, the hashtag Cubs talk in the corner, upper right, here tonight. And uh, we include hashtags and in games from time to time. We're testing out whether or not we should keep them uh, in for every game. So go to Twitter, hashtag Cubs talk, and just give us a, I like it. What is it we were going to like or not me? like? Got hashtags in the upper right corner. On your monitor, you can't see it, but oh, it's there. I don't see it. So we're asking our viewers whether or not uh, they like it. We've got pretty good feedback on the uh, pitch tracks. And a swing and a miss, strike three. It's interesting because Fulton Abbott's essentially pitching like a reliever. I mean, he's just throwing gas, one heater after another. Maybe his MO first time through the order, and then we'll start to mix in more breaking balls as we go along. But that's the beauty when you got an arm like this, especially when the hitters are getting their first look. You don't have to be too fancy. That's some serious Cholula he's running up there. I almost said that is some hot sausage, but it's sauce. And if you say sausage, it kind of changes from sauce to encased meat. Oh, there you go. There's a little wrinkle. A little slide piece or a cutter. And so Larry's like, wait a minute, man. I want to hit the fastball. have their first hit and Solaire will get Arietta to the plate. Yeah, there he got his fastball and he dropped the head on 99 like it was nothing. And an elite fastball against tremendous bat speed. Solaire with a, a sack fly last time up in the ball game last night, but prior to that, boy, he'd been ugly. 0 for 4, including a couple critical situations where he failed to get runs home ground into a double play in the seventh when the Cubs had a little something cooking. Strike on Arietta. Uh, a triple and a home run this year. By the way, make sure on the, uh, the hashtag thing, reply to Cubs talk, not to me. I don't make the decisions and people who need to see it aren't on my Twitter feed. So thanks in advance. It's like the <laughs> Mr. Show, the old uh, HBO sketch comedy show. We once mm -hmm. did a taped call-in show. And the host kept reminding people as they called in. He said, now that was last week's topic. The show we're recording is next week's topic. <laughs> Ground ball, Simmons has it. In the first show, he said, of course, we probably aren't going to get a lot of calls since we are recording We're this. I'm <laughs> coming to you live. Nothing, nothing after two.
This is the Ford F-150, and this changes everything. And so does this. Drive any new 2015 Ford F-150 with 0% financing for 72 months. See your local Ford dealer today. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced or descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. They say rain's bad luck for a wedding. No, it's good luck, actually. Adventure, it's in our DNA. The new Discovery Sport. Land Rover, above and beyond. Your dreams evolve, and with committed support, they thrive. American Family Insurance. Hey, Cup fans, let's go. Don't miss all the excitement here at Wrigley Field. Tickets are still available for the rest of this homestand. And as a reminder, the tickets from the original June 15th rainout are good for this Monday afternoon's makeup game with Cleveland first pitch is at 105. As always, visit Cubs.com. For tickets and the latest updates. That was the night the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. Remember? And we've been playing on the, uh, on the big board here during the rain delay. 1 0 on uh, veteran Michael Bourne, who's playing left in his return to Atlanta. Came over on August 7th. Along with Nick Swisher and some cash for Chris Johnson. Kind of an odd deal. Bottom line, I think the money ended up being a wash for the most part. And the Braves get a couple of guys who would say more than likely will not be here in 2017 when they open their new ballpark. So Bourne is signed through next year. He's got a vesting option for the year after that. Nick Swisher is also signed through next year. The problem with Swisher, though, JD, is he's got two surgically repaired knees, and if he can't play first base where Freddie Freeman is. I don't know where he could play. It sounds to me like he more likely than not would end up with an American Back League in the American team. League, yeah. Maybe trade him in the winter. Swing and a miss as Arietta strikes him out. Horn went out of the zone for that low fastball, 95 down below the knees. Second strikeout for Arietta. <laughs> Didn't hit his spot. They were trying to go down and away there. He kind of pulled it. But he got his guy. There's Fulton Evans. Takes a strike. Giants have acquired Marlon Bird from the Reds. And they've got so many injuries in their outfield right now. Aoki, Pagan, and now Pence. Pence went on with an oblique. Aoki's due to come off the concussion DL today. Pence went on. Aoki uh, is in their lineup. Yep, playing left. And they trail 2 nothing in the sixth inning. He went. And that's a strikeout. So 
So Marlon has been a traveling man here these last few years. And he's now a San Francisco Giant. Not hitting for average, but the power numbers are good. Obviously, it will be suppressed out in San Francisco, but still provide a dangerous bat. One they sorely need with all those injuries. Kinkus has hit mostly third or fourth this year. He's in the leadoff spot, which is a good spot for him to see a healthy on base percentage. Ninth in the National League coming in at 369. He only has two home runs, and his first one didn't come until July 20th, his 92nd game. First of a four year contract. And right after he signed with Atlanta, he had neck surgery over the winter. So may have robbed him of a, a little bit of home run power. To his right, that's Coughlin. Well, he had a sharp here early on. He's given up one hit through three. Welcome to Asia. I'm just here for work. Nothing's working. I'm loving this place. No, you're not. Yes, I am. There's some mystery. There's a little suspense. Did you hear that? Go back to your rooms. There's a war going on out there. We gotta keep putting 10 steps between us and them. You're gonna jump first. I'm gonna throw the kids over. No way. Escape, win it R, August 26th. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Ho! <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Looks good, doesn't it? Don't get it. It's yours. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Jack Link's Jerky. Feature Wild Side. <gasps> Busy. It's worn like a badge. Coming in early, staying really late. When did leaving work on time become an act of courage? Sometimes it takes a fearless choice to wake people up. Can a CUV provoke change? You have no idea. Introducing the all-new Hyundai Tucson. The official pace car of living. Tomorrow, the Northsiders swing for the bleachers in a game two till with Atlanta. But first, join us for Cubs pregame live, presented by Fields Auto. Then, buckle up and let's get ready to rumble. Cubs, Braves, tomorrow at 2.30 on CSN. Tomorrow, first pitch is at 3.05, and we're celebrating the 90s. Budweiser Bleacher fans, 21 and older, will receive a reissue of Neon Cubs hat in one of two popular colors. Fun 90s themed pop culture will be featured throughout the game. For tickets, visit Cubs.com. We'd like to welcome all of our viewers watching on Windstream Communications in good old Grinnell, Iowa. Cubs batting here in the bottom of the third. And Larry points out on Twitter the battery of Fulton Evich and Przinsky. Got to be closing in on a record, right? Just 11 letters in Fulton Evich, 9 in Przinsky. The spelling Two letters combined. I mean, uh, trying to think of the other side. Maybe Bob Walk and Milt May. Ed Ott. Yeah. Of course, the Salta La Machia. Ground ball base hit in the left. And the leadoff man is on for the second straight inning. So Addison Russell is aboard for Fowler. Second time through the batting order brings. Our 
Garcia in on the grass at third. Fowler takes a strike. Fouled away. Well, four game series, there's a pretty decent chance we're going to see Edwin Jackson for the Braves recently joined their club. And back here at Wrigley Field. Talk about conflict of interest. Look at playoff money if the Cubs make the postseason. Right, yep. And the Braves dealt with that when they went to uh, San Diego. Kimbrell, Upton. In this instance, Edward would have a vested interest in helping the Cubs. He could intentionally tip his pitches. Now, there have been guys who've double dipped. That's going to be close. Russell just got back. Uh, Lenny Harris got playoff money in 2003 because he spent time with both the Cubs and the Marlins. Tied his career high in home runs in the 13 last night. Got a seven game hitting streak coming in. And the Cubs have two on with nobody out. Two on, nobody out, and here comes Schwarber, Coglin, and Rizzo. Good try, but Peterson not able to haul it in. Back to back singles, big chance here to get the jump on the Braves. Schwarber hit his 10th home run last night. He now has the second best at bat to home run ratio in Major League Baseball for guys with at least 125 plate appearances. Obviously, does not have enough playing time to be listed among the league leaders and filter down for that many plate appearances. Only John Carlos Stanton better than Schwarber. Break there. He's got a three game Wrigley Field home run streak. Four total. Two against Milwaukee in the 13th, and then home runs each of the two games in the just completed series against Detroit. Didn't mean to that time. This was last week against Milwaukee. A big three run shot two nights ago to get the Cubs back in the ball game and this one just got out to center last night. Thirty six games he's done some very impressive things and he's in awfully good company a little greedy there chasing that high heater but you, know, you got to be ready to swing it when the guy throws as hard as Fulton Evich does. Pop 
picked him up. Infield fly rule in effect as Garcia makes the grab. You see the play of the highlight of uh, Jason Bourgeois? Maybe did Jason. Not. Um, infield fly roll on an infield pop. You're always advocating for the play, the intentional drop to see if a base runner will mess it up. Yeah. Uh, this, I don't think this was an intentional drop, but it was a whiff on the infield. I, I believe just to the right of the mound, and Jason tried to score and he was out easily. Did we find out after the game if he knew the rule? I, think, I, I didn't read any details on it. It, it just looked like a brain cramp. Yep. I, I really think he saw the ball drop and thought, well, hey, I can go. I, or I have to go, even though you run at your own risk. That play, I always look for an umpire, and once that arm goes up, the batter is out. He is out of the play. But 999 times out of 1,000, that ball, or even more, is caught. But it doesn't have to be. And the one other thing about catching or not catching is if you don't catch it and it gets away from you, that could be a problem. And the runners really could advance. I think a lot of guys would panic in that situation. Boy, Freddy Gonzalez is really letting Doug Eddings hear it. Oh, oh, here we go. Him. So Freddie will get his money's worth now. A short night for Freddie. Clearly frustrated. We saw that previous at bat with Schwarber. Eddings uh, was yep. squeezing him a little bit. Freddie advocating for his young right-hander. <laughs> Doug is like pointing. Look, look what he just did to my plate. Can you believe he did that to my plate? Said hi to Chris. On his way by. They would have been together in Miami yeah. a little bit. That's good stuff. That's doing your job there. You trying to get in the umpire's head a little bit, fighting for your guy. Said his piece, didn't blow a gasket, and then says hi to the opponent on his way out. Two and zero oh on Coglin. Two on, one out. Scoreless tie here in the last of the third. Pulled into right and a base hit. Russell will be sent. Here comes the throw by Markakis. It is late, and it's one nothing Cubs. Fowler advances to third on the play. Third single of the inning. Not a whole lot of room there between first and second, but Coglin able to hit that ball beyond the reach of Peterson. Sharply hit ground ball. And Russell in with run number one. Feel that one coming. Colton Evich having a hard time locating. 
Rizzo likes to ambush that first pitch fastball. Boom, there's your forward home run replay. That's number 24 for Anthony. Chatting with him briefly this afternoon, I pointed to the flag. Hey, it's blowing out tonight to right, which almost never happens. And he said, yeah, I'll probably hit the ball on the ground five times. That's a line drive home run. Didn't need any help. Having some fun with Eric Hinsky. Assistant hitting coach. Four nothing. the best pitching coach for a young pitcher is the opposing lineup. A guy like Fulton Evich with his arm there's probably a lot of starts in the minor leagues where he's not had to be that precise with his fastball just because he can overpower guys. At this level sooner or later they're going to catch up to you and you find out that you have to locate even when you throw 98 miles an hour. Experience is the best teacher. Pitching coach can tell you, catcher can tell you, hey man, you got to get the ball down, you got to do this, you got to do that. Usually it's when you get knocked around a little bit by the other hitters, then you say, okay, got to go to plan B. Judge Smales fan club in the house. Swing and a miss, strike three, two outs. Right hander, it's two and zero. Oh. Fulton Evich graduated from Manuka High, 2010. And drafted out of high school by the Astros, as we mentioned earlier. Same high school as uh, Nick Offerman, Ron Swanson. Yeah, he's really good. Very Went there at the same time. Nick is a uh, big Cup fan. Um, saying the stretch, didn't he? Last year, maybe. I don't know if. I seem uh, to recall him being have, up here. Yeah. On the ground toward first. And Fulton Evich will pick it up and uh, step on the bag to end the inning. But three singles and a home run. 
the Cubs lead 4-0 after three. If you have moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis like me, and you're talking to a rheumatologist about a biologic, this is Humira. This is Humira helping to relieve my pain and protect my joints from further damage. This is Humira helping me reach for more. Doctors have been prescribing Humira for more than 10 years. Humira works for many adults. It targets and helps to block a specific source of inflammation that contributes to RA symptoms. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Talk to your doctor and visit Humira.com. This is Humira at work. Every pitcher has a different routine. Before I pitch, I hit Subway for my go-to. Have for years. Fresh made turkey and cheese on nine grain wheat with jalapenos, mustard, and a little bit of vinegar. Followed by a steady diet of fastballs. Saturday night on CSN. It's a flash flood on the field as Colorado rushes into action against our fire. Watch the men in red defend their home turf and turn back the rapids. Live coverage starts at 7 p.m. on CSN. Go fire. Your strongest fan photo use hashtag Northside Data Strong Fan. You just might see yourself later on in the ball game. Brought to you by T Mobile. So normally you get Jake Arietta a 4 0 lead and you're golden. A long way to go tonight. We're in the fourth. He's given up just one base runner, a single to Peterson in the second. Ball one on Cameron Mabin. Braves are the lowest scoring team in baseball. 3.67 runs per contest. Dead last in slugging percentage. Middle of the pack and batting average. They don't strike out. They lead the league in that regard. Right. I was, strikeouts. I was going to say there are some people out there who have a hard time grasping the idea that strikeouts aren't necessarily an evil thing if your team does it a lot. There are a lot of good teams who who strike out. And in the case of the Braves, they do make contact, but not enough of it has been good contact. Yeah, they don't slug. Mm. We just want to have it all, don't we? We want our team to hit home runs, to never strike out. Hit, uh, never leave anybody on base. Right. It's a payoff pitch, and it's bounced to third. Oh! oh. Chris Bryant with a pretty easy play and the ball snuck under his glove. That, well, that's what you don't want to do is open up the door here for this struggling team. They've been shut out the Braves half five times since the All-Star break. And how many times do we say it when you see an infielder start to retreat? Bad things happen. Trying to back up and find a convenient hop that never came. So he'll go over to the other side. As they shift against Freddie Freeman. Yeah, and this is, you know, this is obviously a important uh, sequence here with Freeman coming up. He's their best guy. Pierzynski with very good numbers against Jake in his career. So 
I guess one question for now for Carlos Tosca, the bench coach, who managed the Braves the rest of the night after Freddy Gonzalez got kicked out. Uh, Maven has 19 stolen bases. You don't score a lot of runs. You're down four nothing, but do you get a little more aggressive maybe with your base running against Arietta? He's been fairly easy to run on this year. Yeah, I, I, you know, probably not right now because you got guys coming up that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Um, but depending on how this at bat plays out in the next, and certainly with Przinski, I think you'd, you wouldn't mind starting a base runner. You'd count on him to put the ball in play. You get a little more swing and miss from Freeman. I'm not sure what Carlos is thinking. He's hoping one of these two guys can knock one out of here or. Hit one in the corner. course will be dictated by the math the, the times that Terry Pendleton is getting on Arietta's delivery home if they feel like he's slow enough to home play where maybe can get the base easily then they'll probably say yeah go get it and that's going to be a hit the shift buster that's just gross for Freeman just dribbled it toward third and no play for anybody. I don't know if I've ever heard of an infield hit. Check this out. Gross. <laughs> Sounds like a pitcher talking. Probably a good thing Jake didn't corral that one because he might have tried to do something heroic with it and there was no play to be made. Curveball is a good ground ball pitch for Arietta to a left handed hitter. Starts him with a heater, bottom of the knees at 95. But if you can get him to try to pull that backdoor curveball, might get a little ground ball to Coglin. Turn it into a double play. The wind has kind of died down. Swing and a miss, one and one. More than kind of. I thought he called the first pitch a strike. He did not. Well, he should have. Field hit to start the inning. After the Cubs got four in the bottom of the third. When a guy's had a little success against you, you try to find a little something extra to blow it by him. And a misfire there from Jake. The kickoff the weekend. This is the only night game of the series. Three o'clock tomorrow and Saturday and 1:20 on Sunday. A 
Another 2-2 two -two ground ball. First base, Rizzo will fire to second. They get one relay in time. How about that? Three to six to one. Well, he ultimately got that ground ball from Przinski, not to second base, but this works just fine. Three, six, one, executed beautifully. If he sets his feet, good, accurate throw to Russell, who clears Freeman. Jake does his piece. Runner at third, Maven, two outs. Good play by Montero. Saved a run, at least for the time being. Slider missed two and one. As I mentioned in the first inning, if Jake wins tonight, he'll be the first 15 game winner in baseball. Cubs have not had a 20 game winner since John Lieber, 2001. around the error and the infield hit to start it for nothing. Me and you. And you and me. No matter how they toss the dice. It had to be. The only one for me and you. And you for me. So happy Now there's a rewards program that lets you earn points at one place and use them at another. Introducing Plenty. Discover lots of ways to earn points fast and join for free at Plenty.com. One thing we can rely on in this house is UVerse high speed internet. I've been streaming movies all day without any problems. UVerse high speed internet has brought much needed reliability to our life. It's got reliability you can rely on. With 99.9% .9 reliability, it's one thing you can rely on. Get UVerse High Speed Internet for $15 a month for 12 months with other qualifying service on one bill and a one year term. You can get 0% APR financing during our annual clearance event. Seriously? Seriously. 0% APR on a bunch of Toyotas. Seriously? Seriously. Only happens once a year. Seriously? 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 Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> Right now, get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2015 Corolla. Or lease Corolla for just $169 a month. Hurry into your Toyota dealer today. She's all yours. Seriously? Seriously. Toyota, let's go places. Cubs lead 4 to nothing. Uh, we are headed to the bottom of the fourth. This Sunday, the finale of this series, first pitch will be at 120. And the first 5,000 kids will receive a Cubs toy airplane presented by American Airlines. After the ball game, the first 1,000 kids, 13 years of age and younger, with wristbands, will be allowed on the field to run the bases, weather permitting. For more information, visit Cubs.com. Well, that's a good hat right there. Yep. Good lid. Solid work. Boltonevich gave up a four spot. Three on the homer by Rizzo. His last inning of work faced seven hitters. 
facing seven, eight, and nine, and that one lined hard to Garcia. So, Solaire's hit it hard twice. It's an elevated breaking ball. One out. Tough break for Solaire. He was out before he left the box. That's how sharply that ball was hit. Strike one on Arietta. Before Fulton Evich signed uh, with the Astros, he had committed to the University of Texas. He's going to pitch for Augie Garrido. And over a million bucks. First round choice. Decided to go pro. Both parents threw him batting practice when he was young. Two and two. Called strike three on the outside corner. Yeah, it's always a difficult decision for a young guy when you get drafted out of high school, but when there's that much money on the line, it's awfully hard to say no. I mean, people would always advise, hey, college education, go to college. Well, I was waving a million or a couple million dollars under your nose. I think you got to go for it. Russell singled and scored in the third. In fact, he led off the inning with a base hit. Drives this ball to very deep left, and it will go. Five nothing. Young man is on the rise. Been talking about it for a good long while now. The quality of his at bats, the way the ball is jumping off of his bat. That's number eight for Russell. And slider that didn't slide a whole lot. Cement mixer. Fulton continues to be plagued by the home run ball. That's 17 allowed. 80 and two thirds innings this year. One one on Fowler. Two homers for the Cubs. Rizzo. Number 24. Russell number eight. And a single for Fowler in the third. Extended his hitting streak to eight games. And he's scored now 80 runs on the year. Swing and a miss, strike three, and the inning is over. Addison Russell, a two out blast. And the Cubs now lead five to nothing. Posted. Dogs grew, car didn't. Hashtag Great Dane Problems. Wow, how old are they? Eight months. You're gonna need a CRV, and you could find a great deal on one at the Honda Summer Clearance event. The CRV is Motor Trend's 2015 Sport Utility of the Year and a 2015 IIHS Top Safety Pick. Oh, he likes it. Perfect. Hurry in to the Honda Summer Clearance event for a great deal on your new Honda. Gerald Hyundai moves you forward with a full line of the most fuel-efficient, affordable cars on the road. And we make it easy to save big on your favorite models. Get 0% financing for 60 months on all models to qualified buyers. Drive home today in a new Gerald Hyundai. All backed by the Gerald exclusive lifetime warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. There's an exciting drive ahead only at Gerald Hyundai. Gerald Hyundai at I-88 and Orchard Road or visit GeraldHyundai.com.
There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Cubs Braves tomorrow at 2.30 on CSN. 5-1 Cubs lead uh, top of the fifth. Saturday, the MLS returns to CSN Chicago as the fire take on the Colorado Rapids. Coverage starts at 7 on Comcast Sports Net. The Rapids and the Fire. Good buzz in the ballpark tonight. Peterson swings and misses. Come over in the Justin Upton deal in December from San Diego. Two sports at McNeese State. As a defensive back for two years on the football team there in college. Here it is. Two and two. Four nothing Pirates, bottom seven over the Giants in Pittsburgh. Toward right, and that'll get in for a base hit. He's two for two. There's not been a putout made by an outfielder for the Cubs tonight. All the outs have been on the ground or a strikeout. Peterson has stolen 10 bases, but he's also been caught 10 times. It's not a good percentage. And he takes off. Called strike throw is late. 20 of steal allowed with Jake Arietta on the mound. So that answers your question about how Carlos Tosca would play. So last thing we had the middle of the order guys up. He was kind of laying back hoping that they would do some damage now as he gets down toward the bottom of the order it's going to be a little more aggressive take some chances on the bases try to generate something against Arietta. Strike on Simmons 0 and 2. Protect mode. Simmons just gets a piece of that 95. Braves just two years removed from the season in which they won 96 games to win the East. They were 96 and 66 in 2013. Four games below 500 last year. And obviously, well off the pace this year. Bryant, who made an error earlier, takes care of Simmons. Peterson holding it second. And 
96 wins. They finished first last year, second despite that sub 500 record. It's been a weak division and really weak again this year. Especially with the Nationals not being anywhere close to what we thought they would be. Strike on Bourne. Joe Sheehan uh, wrote today about divisions. The National League East is on pace to be the first division ever to lose 57% of its games against everybody outside that division. So against the rest of baseball. The National League Central has the best interdivision winning percentage. And the NL East has the worst. The Mets went 0 and 13 against the Cubs and the Pirates combined, for instance. The Mets are eight games better than 500. The Nationals just one game better. Go to third. Peterson read it well, and he gets in on a wild pitch. Uh, there has been, I, I saw somebody the other day think we should go to uh, AL NL and just take the top teams from each league. Get rid of divisions completely. Would you be in favor if somebody asked you to vote? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to take a look at it, think it over some. Uh, so you're trading off some of the divisional rivalries. You're making the Play everybody playoff. twice at home and on the road. Say, right? Balance the schedule like they used to anyway. Yeah, I, I love the old, uh, you know, two division format. Everybody played the same schedule within your division. You know, the problem now is with interleague play and everything else. You're, 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 you're not playing the same exact schedule as your right. main competitors. So that's one of the sacrifices you know, that they've made to popularize the game within their.